Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartmann from GraphicInMotion.com and it is tutorial time again. In this tutorial we will create this really cool looking 3D head up display something that you can see here and we will use a bunch of different techniques. We will use some assets from the 3D library that is now included in Stardust and we will use these assets as 3D models. We will use these as particles. You will learn how to combine these with emitters and you will learn how to create all these awesome digital head up display particles that you can see right here. So let's jump right into After Effects and let's get started. In After Effects, first of all, I want to create a new composition as always, and I will just use the HDTV 108025 preset and call this my Stardust 3D Hot. And now I want to create a new layer, call this Stardust, and I will apply the Stardust effect to this layer. Now let's get rid of this emitter and these particles because I do not need this right now. I want to start by adding a few 3D assets from the library. To add these assets you just click the browse presets symbols here. So let's open up the library and in my case I want to use one of these generic things here and you see that we have a bunch of different elements here and I want to start out with these cycle elements here and first of all I want to add this cycle number 11 to my scene. So let's add this to the scene and by default you see it's quite small but it's already visible right here in my scene. Now I want to change a few things. First of all I go to my model node and inside the model properties I want to make sure that it is centered and this just centers it around this null and around the middle of our composition. Now I want to increase the size to 2250 make it nice and big and let's take a look at our timeline and you see that Stardust added a few different JPEGs here and these are actually textures that I used to create the look of this element and it also created a Stardust null and this null controls the motion of our 3D model and to keep this nice and organized I want to rename this now so let's just rename this model node quickly and I call it 3D base 01 and I want to rename this null in the same way just that I know what is what later on because I will add a few more elements here and I do not want to get lost. Now I will just hide all of my textures because actually I do not need these in my timeline so just hide these by activating the hide all layers here and then I can just hide the layers by clicking on this little guy here. Okay, so far so good. Now one more thing, if we take a look, it doesn't really look like a metal and it doesn't really look like the preview image in the library folder. So we have to add an environment here. If we take a look at the material settings right here and if we take a look at reflection, then you see that this is a metal uh, and very reflective material and we have no environment to reflect yet and so we do not have a really nice look here. To add an environment you could either create your own by just adding a new composition, putting in an HDRI and then specifying this as an environment layer inside the render settings of Stardust. You see that here you have the environment layer and you can specify the layer that you want to use. There is also a very easy way to add a quick environment and I will do this now. Just open up the preset browser again, then go to models and then let's choose extrude and it doesn't matter which one you choose here, just choose any of these extrudes and click add and this will also add an environment to our scene and you see immediately that the look now changes quite dramatically and this is because if we take a look at our timeline now Stardust just added this environment layer and if we open up this composition you see it's actually a very simple composition, just two layers uh, creating an environment for our scene. I do not need these nodes here that were created and I also do not need the Stardust text layer so I will just delete this and I will just keep my environment to use it in my scene. Um, now let me quickly change the view here from active camera to custom view and now I will add a few more 
elements. So let's open up the library again. Let's go to the 3D library, generic again, and in my cycles, I now want to use the cycles number two and add it to my scene. And just for the sake of it, I will rename this again. So let's rename this and call it 3D base 02. And I will do the same with my null here. So 3D base 02. And to keep everything organized, I will drag my environment on the bottom of my comp because I do not need this. And again, I want to hide the maps that were created for my second 3D element. So let's hide these. Let's go to the model properties of our second element and let's make this bigger. In the model properties, we can make it, let's see, maybe something like 1500. And also make sure that it is centered. So I activate center. And this is a little bit too big. So maybe 1300. Let's see how this looks like. This looks better, but a little bit smaller, 1250. And I think this is perfect. Yep. And now I will change the few to four views and I will position this nicely. So I will line this up a little bit better. So let's select our control null of our base object too. And now I can just drag this down here. So let's see how far I have to go here. A little bit further maybe. So something like that doesn't look too bad for now. Okay, so I think this is good. And now I can add another element. And again, with my status layer selected, I open up the preset browser and in my 3D library, again, generic. And this time I go to this FUY folder. We have some nice user interface objects here. And these are all 3D objects. And in my case, I want to choose, let me take a look, this one here, UI number 28, and I will also add it to the scene. And again, you see we have a new model here and we have a new null, so let's rename these. And I want to call this UI, and I will call the null UI as well. And in this case, I do not want to use the standard material so I can get rid of this. I will just delete this material node. And because now I do not need these maps here, I can also delete this from my scene. So select all of these and just delete them. I will create my own material for this here. So let's add a new material node and let's link it to our UI model. Now let's take a look. The object now is a little bit too small and not really orientated. So go to the model properties and let's make sure that it is centered. And now we can just change the angle here from 90 to zero. I could also do this with my null actually, but yeah, I can do it in the angle in the model properties as well. Now I want this to be way bigger. So let's increase this to maybe 1,250 and let's see what this does. This is a little bit too much. So I think that 1,000 is a good value. Let's see. This is a little bit too small. So 1,100. This looks really good. And now it is intersecting with my base a little bit. So I will just use my control null here and move it up. So let's go to this front view here. And with my control null selected, hold on shift and I press the arrow, the top arrow here. Let's see and bring this up here above my base. And this looks good. Okay. Now I can specify the material settings and I will create a very, very simple material. So I just want to have a diffuse color. I do not want to have any color from particles because I do not use particles yet in this setup. So let's set this to zero and let's specify a color. In my case, I want to use an orange color, something like that, maybe a bit brighter. Okay. And I do not want to have any roughness in here. So let's just set this to zero. I do not want to have any reflection and stuff, but this is set to zero by default. But I want this to be an emissive material. And that means it will not 
be influenced by any lights that I will put into the scene later on. So let's set the amount of emissive to 100. Um, doesn't make a real difference now, but later on if I put in lights, this will make a difference. Okay, so this looks pretty good. And now we can move on and add a few more interesting digital things here into our scene. And therefore I just go back to my one view, to the custom view here. And let me arrange my window here a bit, because this is now my base and I'm done with this. So now it's time to add this very interesting uh, digital graph particles, whatever you want to call it. And therefore, first of all, I have to create a disk out of rectangular particles. And therefore, I will just add a new emitter and I will add a new particle node. And let's link these together. And just for now, so that we see what we are doing, I will just turn off my models here. I will just leave my UI model here just as a reference of the position. Now let's take the emitter and I want to change this emitter from point to ring. So let's create a ring and I do not want any speed here and I do not want any default emitting. I want this to emit only once. Now I want the size of this ring to be very small. So in the beginning we can just take this down to five. And I want the particles to be 72 along this ring. And I want the orientation to be minus 90. And now let's shift this up a bit. So to 450 on Y, so that it is above my UI here. And you see now this small bunch of particles here. Now let's go to the particle node and let's change a few things here. First of all, let's do, or let's increase the lifespan to 10 seconds so that they are visible through the whole composition right here. And let's change the display or the shape here to rectangle. And now I want these to be 12 pixels wide. So I increase the size a little bit here. And I also want these to be orientated. So let's go to the rotation properties and let's change the X angle to 90 that they lay flat on the surface, as you see here now a little bit. Now I want to create a disk and therefore I use the replica node. So let's add a replica node and let's link it up here. And with this replica node selected now, we want to change the type not to offset, but to linear. And now let's add, let's say a replicate of maybe 45 and the offset I want to create using the scale values. So I will just put in 350 on X and 350 on Y. And you see that this now creates this nice disk here. And now I want to offset this in its rotation. So I have to change the Y angle a little bit. And here we can put in something like maybe 13. Let's take a look what this does. And you see that this looks pretty cool. It really created a nice distributed, a distributed disk out of particles. One more thing I like to do, I like to change the size of these and I want these to fade out um, along the replicates path. So I can go to the along path properties and change the size here. And I can use a preset here and I will use this fade out Bezier here and apply it. But this will be a little bit too harsh. So let's change this curve a little bit and let's make this a little bit smoother. Let's see. I do not want these to be so small. So let's just smooth out this curve here quite a bit and create a smoother curve. And actually this doesn't look too bad. I don't want them to get too small. So let's just create a nice smooth curve, something like that. And this should be fine. Okay. So far, so good. Now I want to offset these particles and to offset them and to move them, I will use a turbulence node. So let's add in a turbulence node. And by the way, one more thing, of course, these particles need some kind of a color. So just for now, let's add in uh, an orange color as we did before, something like that. Looks good. I want these to screen. I want the opacity to be 50 and we can also change the random opacity to 50 as well. Just makes it a bit more interesting. And now they are blending nicely into each other. Now back to our turbulence node. 
with the turbulence node, I want to move these and I want to move them along the x-axis, but I want to move them only in one direction. So we have to change the turbulence type to one-sided and the axis to y-axis. And I also do not want to influence all of these particles because let me show you this if I increase this now let's say to 600 all of these will fly around like crazy but I want these to be influenced only in the middle and therefore I can use this sphere here and I can change the sphere size now from 100 which is actually a bit too small to 600 and you see what we have got here now we have got this nice distribution now so you see the particles on the edge they are not influenced by the turbulence and in the middle they are, have full influence and this is exactly what I want now you also see that I get this strange bunch of particles in the middle here and this is because of the replica and if I change the original opacity here from I could change it to zero let's take a look and this gets rid of these initial initial particles here and this looks really nice now back to our turbulence let's make it even better and let's change the noise scale to a higher value maybe 600 let's take a look looks not too bad maybe increase the opacity uh, the, the noise frequency a bit to 17 maybe 18 let's take a look uh, 17 was better and i can increase the position offset maybe to 700 and this looks really good and i want to add some fractal speed in here so let's add a fractal speed of 15 and if i create a quick ROM preview now so let me quickly create a quick ROM preview let's calculate this quickly and you see what this does now now the fractal is moving and is animating all my particles and creating this really interesting hot style like particle graph okay cool so to make this even more interesting and to add more detail to make it kind of crazy actually let's add another replica node and i will just link this to my turbulence node and with this replica now i want to offset these particles once again so let's add another 30 replicates on top here and let's offset these by minus 10 and you see what this will do and this will create really cool look but this is a bit too crazy so i do not want these to be so evenly distributed and i can influence this by changing the random properties and if i go to the random properties and you see we can change the replicate numbers and the replicate chance so let's start with the replicate chance if i set this to a very high value of 99 then you see that now we get yeah less particles and this is what i want maybe not so high so maybe 97 something like that you see now it's really really nicely distributed and i could do the same on replicate numbers if i set this to 90 you see that now i also change the replicate numbers along the y-axis that i created but maybe this was a little bit too much so let's see maybe we put in here 70 not to reduce this so harsh and also maybe here like 95 so that we have still a few particles left here and this looks really cool and now if we create a quick round preview you see what this does and now everything is moving moving nicely together and creating this really cool digital style setup okay one more thing i want to change the colors along y here and i can use the replica node to do this as well and therefore we go to the along path properties here of our second replica node and you see we have this color gradient but you also see that it has no influence on our particles and this is because of this color mix path live graph if you take both of these points now so both of the points and drag them to zero suddenly you see that our graph here has an influence and now we can specify the colors that are mapped along the y-axis so let's change these colors here and i want to use this nice orange again that i had before actually let me quickly feature this from my particles right here so that i take the same here i just copy this value and i will now go down to my replica and copy or paste it in here so a long path right here and now the end color i want to take something like a turquoise or, or bluish tint here something like that maybe let's see okay 
And you see that this looks pretty good. And now I can shift the distribution here by changing these points. I can say, oh, I want a few more particles be orange or, whoops, now I deleted this. That was not on purpose. Let's say something like that, bring in a few more. And this looks really cool. Okay, I'm really satisfied with this outcome. Now, so far so good. Let's turn on our 3D elements again and let's keep adding cool stuff to this setup. So the next element I want to add is a nice circular setup around here and therefore again we will use an emitter. So let's choose this emitter and I will bring it in here. And I also need particles of course, so let's add in a particle node. And let's go to the emitter, more or less the same as before. I want to use a ring. I do not want any motion. I want this to emit only once. And I want the size of this ring. Let me see. First of all, let's orientate it 90 degrees. And now the size should be something like maybe 500. I'm not quite sure. Let's see. A bit bigger, so maybe 700. It's probably too much. Oh, it's not too much it's okay but it is just intersecting with my 3d um, with my 3d object so we'll just move it up by changing the y value to something like 400 this is quite good but i think i need to shift it up a bit further it looks good and now let's increase or decrease the x size a bit to 650 yeah this looks really good okay and now I want to use again some assets from the 3D library, but this time I want to use them as particles. And this is also pretty simple. So let's go first of all to the particle node and change a few settings here. Let's change the lifespan to the full duration of our composition, 10 seconds. And let's change the particle shape to model. And by default, this will just change it to small cubes. And now we want to replace the cubes with 3D assets. Let's open up our library again. Let's go to the library. Let's go to generic and again to this nice UI collection here. And this time I will use UI number 13 and add it to my scene. So let's grab this model here and the material node and let's drag it down here and let's link it to our particles and you see immediately that now my small cubes are replaced by these models but not the setup is not right yet so first of all let's go to the model node you see they are way too big so let's go to the model properties and let's change the size here to something like 10 uh, we'll probably even have to make this smaller yeah still too big so i will just set it to 7 right now. Now they are nice and small and I also want them to orientate a little bit different but I have to control this in the particle node and you have this orientation here and I can set this to normal and if I set this to normal you see that then they will be nicely aligned along the path of my circle and this is exactly what I want. Now I want to create another material or let's say I do not have to create a new one. I just delete this one. And if we take a look here at our timeline and you see that now Stardust added these textures and I do not need these. So I will just delete this. And I also have my null here for this model. And actually I also do not need this. So I could just delete this as well. Now let me duplicate the material that I created for my UI element here in the middle and I will just press Ctrl and D and use this, the same one here on my models. But this time I just want to change the color. So let's go to the diffuse and let's change the color also to a nice turquoise. So let's see something like that looks good and now I will use another model and therefore I go to my assets again library generic FUI and this time I will use the number 12 here 
and add it to my scene. And with this now selected, we will just link this to the particles and you will see immediately what this does. This also creates a bit of a crazy look, quite interesting, but not what I'm looking for. And this is just because the model is too big. So again, let's put this to something like eight and let's take a look how this looks like. Looks good, maybe a bit too small, so I set it to nine so that we have a bit of a difference between here. And this looks really nice. And one more time, I delete this material. And again, we can take a look at our scene here and delete the textures and the null because we do not need this. And I will just duplicate this material, Control D. And I will bring it down here. Okay, so far so good. So now let's add a few more elements, very simple elements. And therefore again, I will just duplicate this emitter here, a control D because it is already nicely set up and I want to use a very similar setup now for the next element. The next element will be just an outside ring with particles. So let's use this here. Let's add particles in here and let's link this here. Now with this emitter here, I will change the size. So this should be a little bit bigger, maybe something like 800. You will immediately see what this does. This will just create a second ring here, maybe even a bit further out, so 900. And I will bring this down now to about 450 so that it sits nicely on the bottom right here. And I do not want these particles to be circles in my case, I want these to be rectangles. So let's go to rectangle. Um, let's change the lifespan to 10. Let's change the size of these. Let's see, I want them to be bigger. So let's set this to 20. And I want them to be, oh, they're not really orientated like I want them. So I go to normal, let's see whether this works here. It does, but they are not flat on the ground as I want. So I will just change them the angle to 90. Now they should lay flat on the ground. This is exactly what I want. Okay, this looks good. And now I can change the size even further. So let's say I want these to be 30 and five, something like that, a bit smaller, but a bit longer, looks good. And I want to increase the number here to something like maybe 128 to create a nice digital look. It looks really good. And again, nice color. So let's take over. Let's change the color to my, I still have the orange in my memory. So I just paste it in here. So now I have the same color in here. And now to make it really simple, I will just use this here, both of them, select them, press Ctrl D and create a second set of circular particles. But this time I want to change the radius, so increase the radius to maybe 950, decrease the number of particles to something like 36 and now with these particles here let's change the color here okay and you see what I did I just added another set of particles to create this nice digital look here Okay, so you see where this is going. You see how easy it is to create very complex hot setups using Stardust. And as a last step in this tutorial, I just want to add a camera to finish the look and polish this a little bit. So let's do this quickly. Uh, let's add a new camera. And in my case, I will use, let's see, a 50 millimeter camera. 
Now I go to Active Camera. And with this camera, camera selected, I will go to Layer and I will go to Camera and I will create an Orbit Null. And I select both of these and colorize them just to keep everything organized. Now let's add a bit of rotation here to X, maybe 22. And I think this was the wrong direction. Yep. So minus 22, minus 22, like so. And we could also use a little bit of Y rotation, something like that. Maybe even more, 60. and 40 minus 40 so just i'm just searching a nice angle that doesn't look too bad now i will just change the y position of this a bit to something like 450 oh, looks quite good maybe a bit further 350 Okay, this looks good. Okay, now I could add in a little bit of motion to this scene and I could start rotating these elements and I will show you this quickly how you can set this up. There are different ways to animate these elements that I've got here. The probably easiest one is to rotate our 3D elements and I can do this by simply animating the control nulls that I have. So if I want to animate my base here, I just select the 3D base 01 and press R to reveal the rotation properties. And now if I rotate this on Y, you see that now our base will spin. And I will just add an expression here, time times, let's say 25. And now I have a slight rotation on my base here. Now let's do the same on base number two and I want this to rotate, alt click on the stopwatch to add an expression, time times, let's say minus, maybe a little bit faster, uh, 40, and in the other direction, and that's why I added a minus. So now the second base is rotating, and we can do the same with our UI. So go to rotation and Y rotation, but actually I'm not quite sure whether in this case it's also the Y rotation because I orientated this a bit different. So let's take a look here which one I have to use here. Now it is the Y rotation, so this is okay. Alt click the stopwatch and time times, and let's say we make this a little bit faster, 35. If I create a quick run preview, let me just reduce the resolution a bit to make this a bit faster, then you will see that now all these elements are rotating. Okay, so far so good. So now how can I rotate my uh, particle emitters right here? And the easiest way to do this is to use a transform node. So let me add a transform node to my scene and let's see which emitters I want to rotate at the same speed. And I want to rotate these two emitters here, the two rings with these, these little uh, strokes here. And these are these two, so let's just add or connect them to my transform node. Now I can rotate them at once and at the same speed, and this is what I want. So in the transform node, we have rotation Y, and you see if I change this value now, then these should start spinning. And actually, I can't really see anything now, but you see, yep, yeah, they are spinning. And this is exactly what I want. So I can also put in an expression here, alt click the stopwatch time times, let's say I want to spin this like so, quick run preview, and you see now they are spinning. And you see where this is going. Now I could just also add a bit of rotation to all the other elements, for example, to my emitter right here, to this ring here. So let's do this one more time. Let's add in another transform node and let's link. Actually, in this case, I can link it directly to the particles here and not to the materials because I think then it will not work. So if I link it directly to the particles and I can now specify the rotation on Y, Alt-click, stopwatch, 
uh, time times minus 25. Let's take a look whether this worked and you see now this is spinning in the other direction and now all my elements are nicely spinning and we have a bit of motion in the scene. Okay, now as a last step, let's add in a little bit of beauty here. So I will add a glow just to uh, finish this tutorial. Let's add a new adjustment layer. And to improve the look a little bit, I will add a glow. And if you take a look at my project settings, then you will see that I am actually in 32 bits. So this is quite high. So the glow might behave a little bit different than when you're working in 8 bits. So you could change this right here. Um, yeah, I will stay in 32. And now we can change the glow. You see it's a little bit harsh right now. So let's just increase the radius here, maybe to something like 150. And this makes it way smoother and looks better. But I think it's still too strong. So I reduce the strength here or the glow intensity 0.6. And yeah, I think that this looks quite nice. Okay, so this is it with this tutorial. If you have any questions, then please feel free to post them in the comments. I hope that you learned something and I hope that you are now able to use all these great assets that you have got in the 3D library and you see how powerful these are uh, when it comes to creating complex uh, mixtures of 3D models and 2D particle systems and creating hearts like this. So really powerful all within one tool and all within one layer in After Effects and this is pretty amazing. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.